In this video, we'll look at whether SCL2 is polar or nonpolar. This is sulfur dichloride. So we need to start with a Lewis structure. So here's a valid Lewis structure for SCL2. When we look at the Lewis structure, it looks kind of like a linear molecule, but we need to take into account the lone pairs. So we have these two chlorine atoms here on either side, and then we have two lone pairs. So let's look at how the molecule here looks in three dimensions so we can understand the polarity. So the sulfur, that's going to be the purple here. Let's add a chlorine on either side. And you can see they're going to spread out, push away from each other as far as they possibly can. But remember, we had two lone pairs. So let's add those. One lone pair, this forces everything down. So now we have this kind of bent shape here. We still have another lone pair. Do that. And now we have what's called a bent molecular geometry. The bond angle, the theoretical bond angle, is 109.5. But lone pairs, they push down pretty hard. So these two chlorines here, they're going to be pushed together closer, probably 103. So we know the molecular geometry is bent, this bond angle about 103. Let's talk about polarity. So we have our Lewis structure, two lone pairs, and then we have the two lone pairs here. When we look at the electronegativity difference, the electronegativity for the sulfur atom, that's going to be 2.5. The electronegativity values for each chlorine is going to be 3.0. So we have the more electronegative chlorine atoms down here. Up here we have the sulfur. The side down here with the greater electronegativity, that'll be negative. And then up here by the sulfur, this side will be positive. So in answer to our question, SCL2 is considered a polar molecule because we have one side that has a greater electronegativity. This is Dr. B. Thanks for watching.